Subscribe to Film Companion for your film fix. Hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. So hi everyone, I am thrilled to have all of you on Film Companion uh, to talk about a new way of distribution that can potentially help us to, you know, revive theatres, uh, work for audiences, help filmmakers. Uh, this is the first time that we'll be talking about it and taking it to the public, which is which is very exciting. Uh, but we'll need you to talk us through it step by step. I know many of you have all been sort of huddling together through these months of lockdown uh, to figure out how we're going to battle, um, you know, the, the sort of absolute uh, assault of the pandemic on the entertainment world in more ways than one. Um, we have, from my information, 10,500 theaters in the country and out of these 7,000 are single screen theaters. But I want to begin by just trying to understand what is the problem with the current landscape. Of course, right now all theaters are shut, but we're talking about hopefully a near future when theater will reopen. Anurag, you recently said in an interview that uh, you have no empathy for exhibitors because uh, you know that when the lockdown is lifted and when you know we start going back to theaters it's going to be the bigger the movie the bigger the star the bigger the release so what is the problem that we have with exhibition right now i think my biggest problem that i think we have exhibition is the ratio of number of cinemas vis-a-vis -vis the number of audience that's out there i always talk about like growing up with in a town which had a video cinema, which did not even have a cinema. A film would come and be projected on the wall. Now in today's day and age, when I'm in the business of filmmaking, and it, it is because it's very simple. If there's been such a long lockdown, when theatres open, everybody, there's a lot of time also to be compensated for. There's a lot of time to be compensated for. The first priority would be films which people are, have been waiting for which the most number of people will come for because, you know, the business also has to strike a balance. So the films that are the least awaited gets pushed away. Films that don't have no known directors or known names, anything that's attracted to. So it gets kind of pushed away towards the end. It doesn't, it won't get the fair chance because the first thing is to overcompensate. Like, you know, there has been such a large gap. So there will be a bottleneck of big films. There will be a bottleneck of big films. And I say bottleneck because that those bottleneck traffic jams we experience in this our country because of the way our traffic system is, there's less number of exhibition screen. So I'm saying that at that time the, the choices will be made on the basis of revenue rather than on the basis of trying to strike an artistic balance. That's what I say when it opens, films which are smaller in nature will get pushed at the back. But can can I ask if even in the past, yeah. pre-pandemic, uh, did we did we manage to strike an artistic balance? Gunita, I know you have struggled to release films which don't necessarily have big budgets or big stars. Uh, Peddler's, uh, Vasan Bala's film is still not released. Uh, speak to us a little bit about that struggle. You know, I think when I did, um, when I produced Salam India, Dasvidanya, we were still able to release films in like 70 lakhs one crore of marketing we would take pride in making films under two crores and you know make the whole math work soon i mean even with yellow boots uh, we were you know we were working on a very tight rope and and, um, and so that the whole machinery works you take pride in working with you know new new kinds of stories you just you know hustle and put that together and i mean it's the effort is the same those many number of shooting days but soon, I think marketing really hit us really badly. By the time, uh, you know, uh, more and more films started coming out, it was like we, the bigger films became so expensive in their marketing that we kind of became me to, to uh, the bigger films in marketing. And that led to around uh, like five crores was less money. You know, when we did Lunchbox, uh, you know, a million dollars was barely enough, you know, and we were fully stretching, pulling in, um, pulling in favors for marketing. And that's when the math started not making sense for uh, releasing Amasan, releasing Haram Khor on cinemas became very tough, became an uphill battle because uh, we have distribution costs 
and we had very high marketing costs because yeah, and so most, marketing most. for Hindi films became out of reach. Uh, this, uh, this I think around post 2011-12 because I know Sid is also here yeah. and Guneet is also here and three of us were involved with Lunchbox and we roped in Karan Johar yes. to present Lunchbox because it was not feasible to for put out too. Lunchbox at yeah. that time in a way just on our own steam everybody just we made Karan the front and the pre-2011 that was not such diff so difficult because I remember yellow boots less marketing budget and we got Even required number of cinemas yeah. like Devdi we had incredible promotion and release it was around 2011-12 something changed yeah. Yeah. That's the time when things flipped. Let's um, mid-budget Hindi film. What kind of marketing budget would that require? Um, mid-size. Mid-size. Uh, not not one of the not not let's say Surya Vanshi, which must have a massive marketing budget. But let's say something like the average Hindi film. What would a marketing budget be? I would say like for independent anything. I mean, at least from five four to seven crores anywhere in that range uh, is what you really need to even make a, and then how many screens do you come out to so there's a real math to this and then how many uh, seats can you even afford to put because we have 20,000 as our uh, print cost you know approximately no the, the, there's also a very important balance that needs to strike you know it's like say for example a, a film starring a Salman Khan or a Shah Rukh Khan can fill a single screen of 800,000 seats. The films we are making, we need screens that have not more than 150, 200 seats. Our biggest problem is we are struggling in a space where every multiplex probably has one screen that has 100, 250, 200 seats. But other screens are big screens. So even if at our, in our best possible way, if somebody, if I have one has to release Eib Aleu, so I'm taking example of Juhu PVR. It will take the screen number five only. Yeah. It will not make any sense to put that film on any other screen. Like Anarkali of Ara became successful playing on that one screen five. Because it can't fill bigger screens than that. And we don't have those spaces. So if the fight, I'm saying at a point, also has to make sense. The fight can't just be ideological. We don't have those kind of screens and spaces which are small enough and good enough to cater to a certain kind of a film. And we don't Which have concept big. of, uh, and we don't have a concept of platform release. We don't have concept of slowly opening up, testing out. Those, those, those have never been built. So it's always like we're also trying to do, you know, trying to spread the marketing budget into various kinds of avenues for an outreach. So, so that uh, I mean, currently all uh, other language films, the outreach is still very limited. You know, it's the Hindi that suffers because you have to do pan-India outreach. If you do Tamil, Telugu, uh, Malayalam, any other languages, the regional outreach is not so expensive. The marketing is not so expensive. They have a cap. Teresa, can I, can I bring you in here? There is yeah. a cap. Can you tell us about the marketing cap that exists in the South? See, uh, the reason why we came up with this marketing cap, we said, first, let's make it a level playing field for all producers. Whether you're making a big film or a small film, in a newspaper, you're not allowed to advertise more than so many times. You're not allowed to advertise in any paper that you want. The most successful newspaper in Andhra Pradesh is Inadu, but we don't advertise our films in Inadu. We just chose Andhra Jyoti and some other paper, and we decide how many ads can go on. And all the publicity is channeled through the producer's guild now. We do, you, even if you have to go on television, we've just chosen two or three televisions and we say this is the television that you'll have to work on. So these are the holdings that you can put. So we put a cap to ourselves and said, let's keep it like, let's keep that common for everybody so that the small producers do not have to fight the big uh, stars. They have put these full pages and all that. We have occasional people who try to break these rules. These things happen. Some producer will come, his son is launched or something, then he will put his full page. But then we have a method of taking him out of the system. We have these fights and they keep growing. It's not that there's a perfect solution. So the first thing we did was do this cap on total publicity. Now, actually, we're talking to KPMG. They're doing a study for us, but for this COVID, 
how are people making decisions to go to a film see we release from the big superstar films right up to the kanchar palam type of small films in my office so what is that call why is somebody watching a small film and how is he getting to know about that film so now we want to do a study and then start do targeted marketing so that each product can go out so that's the plan that we have so that's how it will work then also realize that the small films don't get a window at the best period of time so we are asking the government now to say that you are allowing me four shows a week if four shows a day in a theater give me the fifth show and let the better show maybe the matinee or the evening be available only for the small film even on a festival time if it is pongal is a good time now give me that one show don't give that big prabhas film or that big chiranjeevi film that show give it to one small film so let him also get uh, showcasing at a festival time if he wants it so even so if that is done everybody at least has a visibility of his film so i don't know when the government is going to pass that rule but see earlier we used to have four shows three shows the main picture runs the fourth show the morning show used to be where the smaller films the ladies films used to run but then they've lost it and now one big film all shows that film only that habit has started see basically a lot of tweaking needs to be done uh, like producers we are complaining that we don't have enough showcasing time you take it from the other side exhibitors are complaining that they don't have films to screen because right. most of the screens are running empty i run about 290 screens and i know that my occupation of cinema is very low even though i am a distributor so now we are now coming up to models where i am the producer i am the distributor i am also the exhibitor so the three or four people now in andhra pradesh they are all producer distributor exhibitors so that we try to feed off our own chain and see that the system keeps going so there's a little sensibility here because we are stakeholders of all the four parts of production distribution exhibition and studio sector to see that the industry keeps chugging along yeah so that's what it is but say uh, as as head of the producers guild i i need you to tell me did was there ever a conversation within the hindi film industry of putting any caps on marketing or anything like this did we even attempt it ever uh we were tempted it many times ago yeah, yeah long back and yeah. Uh, yeah. we were always amazed at the discipline of you know the south indian film associations and the ability that they have to actually be able to get everyone to get convinced that it makes sense overall i think in theory everyone agrees that it makes sense because it cuts your marketing costs it makes things much more efficient and so on and so forth i think the problem is that because of the noise corridor that we all live in and the need to actually do things outside of logic sometimes where we're talking to each other through paid media we are doing stuff in order to be able to make a point there are lots of things that are done which are not logical and not in relation to just the expectations around the business of the film and very often a producer at a certain point of time in their own career or in their lives or in their journey feels that they need to do certain things because they just want to do them now uh, as for the competition commission you technically can't impose upon anyone to have a cap on anything because it's a free world but if we were all able to bandy together and decide that this makes sense for the survival overall and for everyone to just feel like we are putting our money into things that are efficient rather than inefficient it would make much more sense but unfortunately there very often we've tried it but it's gone to a certain point and then it hasn't really worked beyond that well you know let now we're in a situation where everybody has to come together and really look at the larger good and for for the entertainment industry as as a whole instead of just how does this serve me so um couple sir and akshay can i bring you in here please tell us about this new model of distribution that we are looking at how would it work in the current scenario in the post covid scenario the need of the r is to facilitate uh, as much content for cinema like suresh sir said that uh, you know as exhibitor i don't have the content so we have to facilitate as much content for cinema as possible so that they are not starved for the content during the initial phase when the sector is opening up with these baby steps and the limited available content because now not too many films are ready 
तो लिमिटेड कॉन्टेंट फाइंड इट वे इट्स वे इन टू दी मैक्सिम नंबर ऑफ सिनेमाज टू मैक्सिमाइज द रेवेन्यू सो अंडर दिस न्यू मॉडल वी एट यू एफ ओ कैन हेल्प इन टू वेज वन अंडर द करेंट मॉडल डिजिटल चार्जेस आर ओने पर शो बेसिस इर रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ द साइज ऑफ द फिल्म एंड इट्स कलेक्शन तो अ फिल्म डूइंग थ्री फोर हंड्रेड करोड़ बिजनेस पेज द सेम चार्जेस ऑन ए पर शो बेसिस दैट अ मूवी डूइंग ए वेरी स्मॉल कलेक्शन पेज hence the distributors of a small film tend to restrict the release of the film to bigger centers so that they don't have to pay digital charges for small centers where the collections are lower so as a result on one hand the creative people's desire to have a wider release remains unfulfilled as uh, anurag has been expressing on different platforms in the past also at the same time audiences in the small centers who want to watch the film don't get to see it on big screen both lose in that process the creative people as well as the audiences so now instead of fixed per show charges we can shift our charges as a percentage of box office collection this is what we are proposing now in the current uh, new model secondly we can help the creative producers reach cinemas directly through our network we have 24 offices around the country and we are very well connected with all screens nationwide we can release the movies in all screens directly through our digital network control the number of shows with the help of our technology whether i have to run one show or three shows or two shows collect money from cinemas based on the collection and disburse the producer share we are, at ufo we are the only people you know in the country who can actually do it uh, across india and we can really uh, help uh, the 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 creative community on that so this will put the entire power of distribution in the hands of an anurag kashyap or a gunit moga you know the content creator while ensuring they get their dues and also get the wide spread release and but at the same time this will also make the content creators responsible for the success or failure of the content they make there will be no mgs there will be no you know distributor in 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 that process so there's no middleman it's going to be if i'm a filmmaker i come to you i give you my film you take it to the audience and then you share the money yeah so this is what we can additionally facilitate i mean it is really the choice of the content creator whether they want to go to the uh, um, uh, go through a distributor or you know what i'm saying is that additionally i can facilitate we can facilitate that you go straight you pick up which screen you want go straight whether you want they run one show two show three show whatever are the collections i'll charge on a uh, on a on a on a box percentage of box office collection so that you don't pay from your pocket by 20000 rupees which uh, gunit mentioned of course it is not 20000 rupees it's on a per show basis so if less shows run it can be as low as 2 3000 rupees only and finally but to facilitate this i i'll just want to make my final point to achieve this objective to do this we have to bring complete transparency at the end of exhibitors i mean this is a very painful point they'll have to install a reliable electronic ticketing system to provide the distributors the content creators the confidence of their uh, in their collection so that they can release it widely and they can get the timely settlement of transactions there, there's a point what he's saying and which i in a previous conversation suresh ji and akshay has also been bringing up about this transparency thing the amazing thing about the learning for a filmmaker and a producer for me like for years i have been told very clearly that you know certain cities and certain tiers your films work in they don't work in those places and when i am making movies which i know would work in places like up bihar like whether it's a wasipur or a mukabad and things i, I don't get to do that is decided since i am making it it must be art house must be limited to the cities right if what he is saying is possible then what happens is i can actually find out for myself what kind of a movie is working where by starting small i don't need to go when the pressure of first three days is off my head as a filmmaker i can actually put out single shows which which like for example paranormal activity they started like that when they were trying to do it in the us or a lot of smaller movies that come out during the oscar season they do it like that yeah i release one show in one cinema in bombay one show in delhi and figure out 
where people want to watch my film can i bring in akshay here to to ask that would exhibitors be open to transparency and to accounting for every rupee earned in a theater right well anupama i think uh, you know any exhibitor who wants to stay in the game for the long term and who has a good know how of the right ways of monetization of that property then always vouch for ensuring transparency in their properties because i'll give you my own example you know for our chain it's been and kapil ji can speak you know for me it's been a good 15 years since we deployed those electronic ticketing systems going ahead more recently since the technology has evolved we even fact you know deployed a system which has sensors on top of the screen which actually give you on a you know digitized automatized basis the head count of the number of people who are there so even if i am trying to fudge my collections that you can't the machine can't lie right. now the benefit in it to me is that the ad revenues that come to me out of you know the advertisements on screen they come on the basis of the number of people who are in the audience if i'm trying to under report collections you know for whatever reason some day i'll get caught in some day you know it it screws my reputation and then obviously you know that won't encourage advertisers to pay me money so anybody who wants to be in it for the long term will want transparency and i can tell you this you know a larger chunk of the exhibition sector has started seeing those on screen ad revenues as a bigger you know a uh, chunk in the pie compared to what they would have earned by under reporting collections and stuff so i can assure you of this a larger chunk of the exhibitors have brought transparency to play and of course i think uh, deploying electronic ticketing deploying technology like the one i spoke about which has sensors that give you a head count are the tools to do it but um, then, yes. on, uh, before one more thing can we play those ads before the movie and not in the interval <laughs> uh, for us <laughs> it's up to you ufo everything at once <laughs> <laughs> why did you just say can we not have an interval i thought you'd ask for that yeah no interval <laughs> there will be an initial reluctance so that's why with the platform we are working because we have we are both producer distributor and exhibitor we are going to load all three on our system and say if anybody wants to work we only work on the platform we don't work on anything else if somebody wants if 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 anurag is making a film he can put the film and he can auction a film if now triple r is there if he will just tell the world that triple r will only be auctioned on this platform anybody in india who wants to come on to this platform please load on your theater you show me how you are selling your box office on a minute to minute basis you give me images of the screen which tells me how many people are sitting in that screen you show me how your lobby looks you show me your theater in relation to the rest of the town he has to have all these like how you have it on a hotel booking chart you go to booking.com you see a hotel you know what rooms he has where he is located how far he is from where so sitting in bombay wherever i have a platform which tells me where my film is going to go so we are really working on it we have enough time now we'll see whether it happens so at least uh, a couple team is helping our team so we are trying to put it together and i'm sure uh, i'm not going to come together back. we are working together with suresh sir on 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 that because our system is very sophisticated it is not only a ticketing system it is also a settlement platform so once the exhibitors adopt it you not only have the transparent ticketing system you can upload a lot of information like suresh sir said that uh, you know uh, the look and feel of the lobby you know completely faceless transaction is towards uh, you know we are we are moving uh, towards that so we But are working, working on it how how will this benefit the audience let's talk about the the you know the end of the, this thing the consumer if uh, if anurag and gunith and atul can go directly to you kapil sir and say release our film how does it benefit the viewer i think i think the day and date content because today what is happening is like uh, i'll again go back to anurag's example of mukkabaz mukkabaz was releasing with he made that film keeping up in mind and in up it released in probably five screens not today i can release it in 500 screens in up it will go simultaneously to 500 screens in up it is the discretion of the screen you see today it is the discretion of the distributor whether he gives it to a particular screen or not in this new way of doing things all 500 screens in up will have the movie available to them then it is their discretion if 250 decide that i will run this film 
100 may decide that I will run four shows. 50 may decide I will run two shows. 200 may decide I will run only one show. Mm. But Anurag is only paying on an actual collection, a percentage of collection as a digital distribution charge. No, if right. you want reach everywhere, we need more Akshay Kumar type actors who are willing to act four to five films a year. We, we, that's what we've been requesting all the stars, all the directors, please do more films. The minute you do more films, there will be more programming. And when there is more programming, more theaters will be built. If more theaters are built, then the other films will also get it. So, and then you put these small rules and so that you have a window for the smaller films. I remember a story when I was a little young, uh, Rajshri, the Bharjatiyas, they, they used to book theaters, some very average theater for six months in one year. I said, what is the confidence of booking it like that? They said, there are people who watch one movie a year or two movies a year. They want their film to play that whole one year so that they come and watch it. Even we, do, we, we only see people watch films. They have like once a month, they'll come to a theater or maybe three times in a year they will watch. The film that they want to watch is no longer available in the theater because we all have very, very short windows. Yeah. See, unless we have a longer window, now that's also a problem because of the OTT, fourth week we release on OTT, sixth week we release. You go abroad, you see that films are playing many, many weeks later, even if 10 people are there, there is a window, there is a time to see the film. You can't force me to come and watch it only that this week. I go once in three months, once in four months, I want to watch that film. So th those kinds of programming have to come back and see that we have that time available to watch what we want to watch. That's yeah. what people want to watch. Yeah. yeah. Right. If I may just take it, uh, you know, take it on from there. So right in the beginning of this conversation, Anurag spoke and all of us have discussed about how India is an underscreened market. Now, despite the fact that we have very few screens per million compared to, let's say, US or even a China, which in terms of population is similar to us, uh, one thing that we see, which is very unfortunate, uh, is that over the last 10 years, if you look at it, you have seen PVR, Rhinox, Cinepolis add properties on. But despite that, the overall count of screen has pretty much remained stagnant because for every screen that's been added on, somewhere else in the country, there's an equal number of screens that are shutting down. Now, here's the fun, you know, the, the fun bit of it. If you go a little deeper into this, PVR, Inox, and Cinepolis have, has changed. If you look at the geographical presence of their screens, they're present in about 150 cities and towns of India. Now, you compare that to the single screen or the independent multiplexes, the geographical presence is about 2,700 cities, towns, and villages. So, even though we are adding screens in a limited geography, we're losing out and we're wiping off cities from the exhibition map in a lot of places where we aren't reaching with our films. And unfortunately, that's so far been happening because of the kind of distribution systems that have been at play. So because you have this whole concept of limited release, because of that fixed cost of virtual print fee, for whatever reason, you haven't been able to take a film like Mukhabas to a Sultanpur, to a Basti, to a Gorakhpur. So one, you aren't being able to develop those markets for newer kind of films. And second, by not being able to feed those cinemas, you're just wiping off the exhibition sector from those cities and towns. So somewhere, I think it's a collective responsibility that we as an industry need to take, where one, we need to look beyond the 15, 20 big cities of India as content creators. And we need to think of the long tail of the audience and try to make films. So I'm not saying you make a baggy four, five, six, seven, eight only. Any kind of films, you know, I mean, Anurag's Mukhabaz is a film that could have done, you know, a lot more in Uttar Pradesh than what it could have done maybe in a Lucknow and in Allahabad. It could have done more in the smaller towns. The Suraj Parjatiya's Viva, classic example. I mean, if you look at the programming that it had in a Bombay, which is, so to say, your biggest market among cities, very limited release there. 30 screens in Bihar, 40 screens in Uttar Pradesh, 40, 45 screens in Rajasthan. So somewhere we need to create content for the longer tail of the audience as UFO and the other companies that, you know, do the, do the logistics of content. We need to make sure that we tweak those systems like Kapil Ji has proposed to make sure that we can take that content to the smaller towns. Yeah. And as exhibitors, I can, you know, as independent exhibitors, I can tell you content that's relevant to our markets and that's reaching us is not really, you know, feeding more than 15 weeks of programming in an year. 
So somewhere it's about, you know, making that flow of content a lot more smoother, a lot more financially feasible for the value chain and developing those markets. Mm. And if you look at it, Hollywood's done that a lot better than we could. I mean, Siddharth's headed Disney and he'll say that if you look at 20 years ago, the market that Hollywood had in India was pittance. And because they kept investing, because they kept playing their films across the value chain, across the markets, today they make a huge contribution to the box office in India. So I think we need to repeat that with Hindi. We need to be more inclusive in terms of the audience that we try and reach out to, have a larger intrinsic value for our films. And that doesn't mean big budgets. It just means a bigger vision. But you know, of course, the the conversation through this pandemic has now and even before the pandemic is is about this always this sort of doomsday voice about the end of the theatrical experience and and atul you said that uh, in fact the theatrical experience is very critical for establishing the identity of a filmmaker you said that uh, the box office is a lesser evil than an unknown algorithm uh, can, can you speak more to that because also there's such a contentious conversation now between theatrical and OTT. Yeah, you know, in my personal opinion, I think first of all, we need to take that in the whole theatrical versus OTT thing, the versus out of the equation. Sure. Because the more avenues a filmmaker or a content creator has, you know, it will be better because it feeds off uh, one another. Like, you know, when I made a documentary film, which I released through PVR in the partnership on uh, Directors Rare, you know, I got into a, uh, an unplanned competition with NH10, with Dam Laga Ke Haisha and with Badlapur because, you know, somebody's release date got shifted and I could not fight that battle because my tickets were selling at the same price at, uh, as those big films were. You know, the other thing, of course, was the the fixed cost of distribution, you know, which you have to pay the exhibition whether nobody's sitting in your theater also. And my documentary was based in Agra and I had a commitment from certain, you know, like associations of Agra Footwear Manufacturer Association to book theaters. But we could not release in Agra again because the long tail had no partnership with the multiplex I was in partnership with. You know, so we lo- uh, I lost a lot more audience, you know, forget the revenue. But what kept me afloat was when the film went on Netflix, you know, and, and sort of made me recover my P&A and the cost of production both. So, you know, taking the verses out of it will, will help us all. Now, you know, the thing is, uh, you know, I have always somehow found myself at a certain cusp of creation, not so much as the Renaissance, which I don't think has happened in this country. Like, you know, when I started my career, there was this Ram Gopal Verma and he suddenly was getting into this phase when he wanted to do five films a year, there has to be more content. And through that, uh, what came out was Sri Ram Raghavan, Shimit Amin, you know, all these talents, Chanda Naroda. But the ideology that was there in that company at that point is, you know, we don't know how this will work. Like, I'll give you an example. It's a bit funny. When I did Darna Manai, there's a line in that film Mere pati ban gaye, you know, and we all had a laugh, like how can a line like this end up in a Hindi film? But it was purely because one man was willing to take that risk and put no holds barred. Like even if a writer would tell him, you know, I'll have this scene and it will work very well with the mass audience. He'll say, stop talking like a distributor in Nas, just focus on writing. You know, when, when I was doing powder, because we were trying to do the content, which was not regular television and uh, you know, the, uh, and although we were partners with Sony and Yashraj was producing it, the, and but we were trying to do limited episodes, not the daily soap and all. The idea was what my producers told me. They said, we don't know how it will work or whether we can make it work. So feel free, go all out, you know, as long as you don't uh, get into a sit- legal situation. So stay within SNP, but no holds barred otherwise. So I thought when I was, uh, you know, uh, doing a, an OTT film now that that is the another cusp that I'm entering, you know, because there are no rules uh, as such yet. But when you enter that, you realize, you know, there is an algorithm there, which I'll just pick up from the conversation you had with Nikhil and Shashi Kant on 10th of the June, you know, which sort of, you know, works in the same way when in the older days, producer used to tell you, you know, real team ke beech mein gaana aana hi chahiye. So figure out kaise likhoge. 
you know so it's like you know then they also tell you where the dip will happen where the background score will help now having said that you know there has been a film called ye ballet and coincidentally sid is here and i wrote to him when i saw the film i wrote to sony when i saw the film because i really liked it it just had a very strong directorial imprint so it's not yeah so it's not that something will not go through the funnel untainted but the the what covid got me thinking you know this whole situation that if we were to lose god forbid the entire theatrical end of it you know because akshay was posting every day about some single screen shutting down somewhere and with my experience in the documentary knowing that you know the just the multiplex in 120 cities cannot sustain what a filmmaker needs we need tailor made distribution plans for you know because certain smaller films are tailor made whether it's a mukkabaz whether it's a peddler whether it's a haram khor like you know forget movies even for television i believe we powder got killed on sony because we couldn't tailor made it for the audience we had made it for unless it came on netflix a decade later and it did well you know because it had a sort of a resurgence because of reviews and all that so the more options we have you know and the thing with the algorithm is it's still evolving even for the people who work in netflix so it's not the years and years of wisdom that the box office has and on top of that box office is transparent so you can throw a point at me about what worked in shole and i can throw a point at you what worked in jay santoshima you know which is in my favor but you can't have those conversations around the algorithm because it's uh, classified to a certain extent so they will tell you this and as of now there is a certain flexibility around it because you know the algorithm uh, has been fed only few years as of now you know yeah. and it's very new in india you know when you say that we need more akshay kumars you we need more films i mean many of us don't have that access you know also guneet sorry yeah. sorry i'm so sorry uh, on that note na sir suresh babu uh, what i feel you know with the new regulations coming in because you mentioned this earlier also that you know if only our stars can do one more film per year i think with the kind of regulations that are coming in in this post pandemic situation they will may, they may we may even have one film less than they are already doing because yeah. it will slow down the productions you know because with the regulations that are coming in yeah. so there is all the more need to find new talent to Absolutely. do you know whether it's yeah so i just wanted to say stuff like you know what i really really learned with uh, producing my first film salam india was taking it to cinemas and booking morning shows myself and opening it up to schools you know and recovering all the money though it had come out of the regular distribution system but only the morning shows recovered so there is a window i keep thinking about it a lot and i'm just putting it to this amazing panel here that you know even children films you know we don't have that we don't have that chain system built out so if there is a, a you know monthly stuff booked i know i i myself ran uh 350 plus shows of uh, morning 9 to 12 uh but we 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 did it with no structure we did it making calls to single screens we did this in 2007 you know uh, india lost the world cup the film was out of cinemas and we were able to construct and children loved the movie but a new filmmaker wants to do a children film outside the star system i don't think the chain allows it right now you know so uh, even building out different kinds of stories and independent voice is not so um, like you know i'll go knock on akshay's akshay kumar's house and you know we'll talk about a movie i don't think that's possible atulad what you said to me till the vaccine comes theatrical business is in deep trouble whatever happens will only happen after yes. that mm. let's let's this is just time pass yeah. all this we open <laughs> to do this people are not going to be anywhere i know a couple is <laughs> uh, it's it's not going to be good it's post pandemic that we have to plan for things in this sure. pandemic time this the things are going to be bad and we all have to accept that post pandemic i, I, I to totally see, agree on we, that sir we can try to get these little chains happening uh, then there will be more value to it and uh, and and what this pandemic has done is it's let people like all of us speak together and understand where we are otherwise we are so busy with the urgent things we just keep doing our regular stuff and keep going so many new ideas are coming up and 
we should be able to put all these things together and see that we have a very very viable exhibition system also there in our cinema business absolutely this is the time to plan right yes and yes said what were you saying no i i just wanted to make a quick point about you know once cinemas reopen when they reopen because we know they will at some point of time sure there's going to be a massive uh, push for the films that have held off to release but then i think what we need to realize is that then there's going to be a long trough and a period of time when actually because there's been no production happening there'll be a long period of time when there will not be any really significant releases and i think smaller movies need to work with the exhibition sector to utilize that time because number one they are more production friendly to produce what might happen is that those might go directly to ott because that's been happening over the last few years because of the incredible pna cost that i called it releasing them if i think kapil is on the right track when he's saying let's find ways to incentivize them to actually release wider but genuinely the vpf cost does need to be looked at because the big miracle that we thought happened 15 years ago with digital and exploded and we were able to release smaller movies we were able to make them we were able to that has actually dried out over the last few years because of this massive massive uh, cost that's been put out to them because of vpf charges and because of distribution charges and i'm keeping i'm for the purpose of this discussion i'm keeping the marketing costs sort of out of it if we are able to remove that and remove that hurdle for smaller movies i think we might actually have a renaissance of smaller movies in cinemas because people do want to come to the theaters to watch movies right at some point of time they will want to come but the big movies are not going to be there so what are they going to be able to come to watch it will be the smaller movies this country doesn't need the non uh, the dci system which is very very expensive so i think we need to uh, we need as uh, at the whole industry needs to come together we all need to work in the same direction ultimately capital will chase profits we are also a listed company so we cannot invest in dci systems for losing money so whether the producer pays it or the exhibitor pays it rightfully it is the obligation of the exhibitor but the way the exhibitors are fragmented in the country it you know uh, they are they are unable to pay it and they are not getting enough content so i think we need to uh, uh, work on providing 30 40 540 weeks of programming to the single screens and the long tail of theaters once we are able to do that it will work and on another platform siddharth you me suresh sir akshay we have discussed that today why a suryavanshi should uh, uh, release only in 20 screens in andhra pradesh today suryavanshi when there is a dearth of content there are only like 120 125 films ready we release 1700 films in a year which means we are releasing 130 to 140 films every month today we have only 125 films ready if we release at the same <laughs> pace 35 movies a week as we do in a normal time which we used to do we have only one month of films ready so the best way is to actually have a triple r release all india when no suryavanshi releases or competes with it suryavanshi releases all india in different languages dubbed in different languages releases in 5000 screens all over the country this is where the you know like anupma you said that this is the time to have that conversation and we are having that conversation that Absolutely. everybody needs to instead of competing work together i think mean, the linguistic barriers this, need to break uh, yeah and how this uh, how this uh, uh, but this limited available content uh, lasts how the smaller movies get more screen space and we are actually chipping in to to with our bit that we are prepared to you know convert our fixed charges per show charges into the into the percentage of the box office collection we know that we lose money big way we might lose uh, money big way in that because there will be no audiences if there is no collection what do we get but still for the good of the film industry we are prepared to do that we are prepared to take films directly to the exhibitor cutting the entire chain and and force the discipline amongst the exhibition sector bring transparency with the help of producers collect money do the fair settlement to everybody and this is exactly what we are as technology company coming in and prepare to facilitate but obviously it is with everybody's support so guys i think i think we could be here for a long time talking about this but but um, i i think it's wonderful that everyone's 
having really sort of um, important conversations about how do we change what exists? Because clearly post-COVID needs to be very different from what pre-COVID was. Uh, we need these stories to go out. Me as a viewer, I want to see all kinds from Surya Vanshi to Care of Kancha Palam, which is one of my favorite films. Um, so thank you. I really appreciate your time. And, and I hope that all of you will keep talking to each other and find solutions. Because more than anything, we need to go back to theaters. We need to see great content on streaming. And we just need to have a great, vibrant Indian film industry. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. So much. Thank you. Lovely chatting with all of you. Thank you. Yeah, no, wonderful. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.